if you make enamel pins, you know that designing them and getting them to your manufacturer can be a process. So here are five tips to help you save time when designing enamel pins. If you're into making pins or collecting pins, be sure to hit subscribe because that's pretty much all I talk about here. Number one is to use a template for your mock-ups. There is no reason for you to be starting from scratch every time you create an enamel pin. I have a template down below, it's linked there, that you can download and use, it's an example. I have a couple of other videos in my channel about designing with Illustrator and using that template, so definitely grab that. That way you can toss your design in there and everything's already good to go. Number two is another favorite trick that I've mentioned before, but it's so important, so I'm going to mention it again, is you can edit your colors in Illustrator. So if you're in Procreate, you found some colors that you like, but you don't know the Pantone for it, um, you can check out this video and that will show you exactly how to do it. It's one of my favorite tricks. So it'll take that color that you picked and it'll convert it to the closest Pantone solid coated color that exists. Isn't that great? So number three is a little bit counterintuitive, but I promise it will save you time. I want you to print out your designs in multiple sizes. So if you're not sure what size to make, then I want you to make a document, make it true to size, and I want you to print it out in multiple sizes. If you're not sure if you want it at an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, then print it out at all of those sizes and then you'll be able to decide really quickly which size you like best and then move forward from there instead of waffling about it so much. Now, number four, I want you to organize your files with Google Docs. I love Google Docs. If you have another way, the Dropbox, if you use something else, that's totally fine. But I want you to have all of your files in one spot. I want you to put all of your finished mockups in one spot. I want you to put any of your master files, your vector files that you use in one spot. That way you can grab them whenever you need them. So if you want to make something else out of those uh, out of those vectors, you can grab them really quickly. If you need to reorder something, you can grab that really quickly. I want you to be organized with your files so it just it just makes everything easier, I promise. <laughs> And number five is to make a checklist. I like using Asana. I have a video that I've made about how I use Asana for projects, but it's really great. You can create a project that's just design new pen, you know, and then you can write out all the steps that it has to, that it takes to make that pen. So you can do, it's time to sketch your design, vector your design, put it in your mock-up, send it to your manufacturer, approve the mock-up that they give you, pay for it. <laughs> And then when they come in the mail, you can add, you know, um, uh, process your pens, package your pens, photograph your pens, all of that stuff. So if you have that checklist in place, especially when you're in the early stages of designing and sketching out your stuff, then you can knock everything out really quickly. So you'll know exactly where you are in the process. And it's also really great when you are batching work. So say you wanna create a collection or multiple pins, you can have that set up and you know sketch all of these pins you know and um and go from there i think it's really easy and it's a really great way to organize your time and organize your brain and make sure you are checking everything off that way you don't miss something you don't forget to put a design into illustrator you don't forget to send something to your manufacturer you've got everything there and just being prepared really saves lots and lots of time and now we have a bonus tip is to have your manufacturer um, vector your designs. <laughs> Sometimes this is an extra cost, I've mentioned this before, but if it's worth it to you, if you are not comfortable with Illustrator, if you know it's going to stress you out and take you tons of time, just have your factory do the artwork for you. So in that case, you can put your design in your mock-up not necessarily um, like vectoring it, but just indicating what Pantone colors you'd like to be used. And then that's it. And then you can just send that to them and then they can do the artwork for you. So bonus tip, it depends how much it costs per manufacturer. I'm not even gonna give you a range. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's not. Um, that's just something to ask your manufacturer about, but it's an option. 
All right, so those were my five tips to make designing enamel pins a little bit easier, plus a bonus tip. Um, if you found it helpful, give me a like and a subscribe. Be sure to comment down below. Tell me which ones you already do, which ones you are excited to try. I love to chat about process and kind of how you make your pins. And of course, if you are interested in making enamel pins, want some help, want some support, want step-by-step -step <laughs> instructions on how to get it done, how to have successful launches, all of that good stuff. You can join Enamel Pins 101. I have the link down below. That's my course where I have multiple modules on everything you need to know about making enamel pins, starting your shop, shipping. We have monthly question and answer calls. So you can ask me questions directly and I will answer them. Um, we have Facebook groups that are amazing. It's, uh, it's really awesome. So if you want some extra help, and you want some encouragement and, um, and to have an amazing support group around you and starting your pins, join Enamel Pins 101. That link is down below. And yeah, I'll talk to you later.